Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, AK Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, so we've got another Fat Electrician video, one that I have a lot of experience with, at least three years. Um, I was after the military, I, uh, I worked in politics, and then after that, I worked for the post office for about three years as a mail carrier. Um, yeah, that being said, um, yeah, the, these these vehicles are garbage, uh, and they've been in service for a long time. Um, they were talking about replacing them, um, but uh, I, I knew that was they they've been they've been saying that for years. They've been saying that for oops, sorry, they've been saying that for a good like I don't know, got to be like ten years now. Um, but uh, yeah, these vehicles break down all the time. Uh, so if you're wondering why your mail's late, um, that's might be one of the reasons. <laughs> Uh, I, I had a vehicle break down on me at least once every three to six months. You'd have a vehicle just uh, uh, take a nap, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he'll go into uh, probably the history of it. I think it's made by Ford. I believe it's a Ford vehicle. Um, but obviously, uh, the post office doesn't make any money, so it wouldn't make a uh, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to uh, buy a bunch of new uh, an entirely new fleet. Um, but I, I hear they did it for uh, the new vehicles. They do it for the um, bigger cities like San Francisco, L.A., New York, possibly Orlando. I don't. I don't know why Orlando. I guess Orlando doesn't make sense. Um, anyway, uh, I digress. <laughs> Uh, let's get into it. Single time, I try to make a funny, lighthearted video. It what? gets completely unhinged. Right. <laughs> Today we're talking about Northrop Grumman's most iconic vehicle oh, of all time. Oh, I didn't know it was a... Uh, Every aviation... I didn't know it was a North uh, Grumman vehicle. I know it says Grumman in the title, but... <laughs> it's like, okay. Nerd ...just sat forward in their chair because if I don't pick their favorite Northrop Grumman plane, they're going to roast me in the comments section because if you don't know, Northrop Grumman is a defense contractor primarily know known for making war planes, and they've created Whoa. some of the most iconic and effective war planes the world has ever seen. Some of those planes include the F-4F Wildcat, the F-6F Hellcat, America's Gun with Wings, the A-10 Warthog, the B-21 Stealth Bomber, well, and its B replacement, too. the B-21 oh. Raider. But all of these pale in comparison to Northrop Grumman's most iconic and durable vehicle of all time. A it vehicle is, that man. was designed to perform its task. I think it was designed back in the, I want to say 50s, possibly 60s. Ask swiftly, despite snow Maybe or later, rain or heat or gloom of night, the LLV, the long life Hell vehicle, yeah. a.k.a. the mail truck. Oh, and by the way, uh, when I, I I have a video that uh, did pretty well. It, it was people listen mostly because they like the sound of my voice, and it's very low. Um, but it's it, uh, I was talking about the post office. Um, yeah, and uh, I transferred from California to Arizona. Uh, California was nice to work at. Uh, it was a nice post office where I was at. I was in uh, Oxnard. Um, Oxnard's not nice, but the post office, uh, everybody was nice there. Um, then I transferred to Phoenix, and if you don't know, those things don't have air conditioning in them. So if you're a mail carrier in Phoenix, dude, it, I don't know how I lived. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. You're not serious. You've got to be shitting me. Thank you as a tank, though. One of those. Yeah, the same people that made like half the planes in U.S. military history also made your friendly neighborhood mail truck. I can only imagine that the U.S. Postal Service put out a memo like, hey, we're looking for a vehicle to help deliver packages. And the U.S. government was like, oh, package, payload, <laughs> potato, potato, same, sure, thing. same thing. Call up Northrop Grumman. They're really good at delivering that type of stuff. Okay, Northrop Grumman's used to putting warheads on foreheads. Now they're putting parcels on porches. It's the same thing. Now all I need is for Lockheed Martin to start making action figures and my life will be complete. You uh, put LGN. chips? and toys yeah. isn't that just ljn i don't know <laughs> Standard issue is insufficient. okay all jokes aside i'm actually legitimately upset that this thing is named the llv i mean it's made by it grumman the makers of the f4f wildcat and the f6f hellcat and you didn't name this the mail cat are yeah, you fucking but, kidding you know, me you know did you forget to do the ad no <gasps> i did the ad thanks for finally being in a youtube video with a shirt on for once you're welcome no take it off oh. <laughs> <Nice> long, <Borat. laughs> He's right. Take it off. 
This video is brought to you by Zydax, custom gaming PCs, all made good. right here in America with American tech support. They can do any type of customization you want, or they have pre-built ones ready to ship right now. And then we have one of our newest sponsors, Zonka Life Recovery it. Bomb. It's made right here in America, and it's yeah. the best thing I've found for aches, pains, and athletic injuries. It blows every other topical treatment I've ever tried out of the water. I'm going to have both those sponsors and discount codes linked down below. Let's get back to the video. Word so up. after finding out that the mail truck that I've grown up with my entire life was actually made by Northrop Grumman, I decided decided, hey, I'm going to make a video on this. This is going to be hilarious. It's going to be lighthearted. It's going to be funny. It's going to be great. So I started looking okay. up the specs. I started looking up the history, how this came to be. And then I asked I myself one simple. I, I swear it was made by Ford, but obviously not. Well, question, I don't know who told wait me a minute. Why on earth is a defense contractor making this little tiny car when an automotive contractor probably could have done the same thing better government? and probably cheaper? <clears throat> and per <throat> usual, to absolutely nobody's surprise, it's because once again, the government ruins everything. There you go. Yes, we do. All right, so let's take it from the top. Once upon a time in 1775, the United States Continental Congress says, hey, delivering mail is super duper important because we don't have email and phones and telegraphs yet, and delivering letters is the only way that we can communicate. So we need to establish a post office, and we're going to take one of our smart founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin, yeah, and make him the first postmaster general to figure this entire thing out. Then the government pretty much immediately decides, hey, we want this to kind of be a government agency, but also we don't want to have to give it any tax money to be able to run itself. Yeah, the th uh, I have a, a point about that. Um, the, uh, the post office technically is not funded by your tax dollars. However, uh, they do get a lot of subsidy subsidies. Um, and there was not t a little while ago. Uh, I was here for I was there for this, but uh, Amazon had a contract with the post office um, where you know uh, we do deliveries on Sundays, package deliveries on Sundays, which uh, pissed a lot of us off. <laughs> when I was working there, uh, when that happened, I was a CCA, which is a um, city carrier assistant, which is just a mailman who gets less money, basically no benefits. Um, but um, yeah, um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, uh, after like a few years, the uh, Amazon just uh, pulled out and just uses their own vehicles now. So it's really funny. Uh, <laughs> it's like the post office kind of was making money when Amazon was there, but uh, Amazon uh, decided, Jeff Bezos decided, nah, nah, we can do this better. And they do, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it a legal monopoly. We're going to go ahead and say that the U.S. Postal Service is the only entity that is legally allowed to deliver the mail. That way, the U.S. Postal hmm. Service is going to be guaranteed to get 100% of the business. So they're going to have enough money to be able to fund themselves and not have to rely on taxpayer oh, okay. money. And this is still going on to this day. This is a legally recognized and regulated monopoly. Mm -hmm. uh, what about FedEx and UPS? Uh, they don't that's deliver actually mail. a good question. They, uh, they don't deliver mail. Uh, they can, but it's, it's for... If you wanted FedEx and UPS to deliver your mail for you, you could do that, I guess, but it'd cost you a lot more money. Um, yeah, because because the postal prices are set, like the the uh, stamp prices. Uh, I'm pretty. I think Congress makes that. I don't know. Something like that. Out of you for once. So the monopoly only applies to like letters and mail and shit like that. Packages are technically different and there's allowed to be commercial yeah. competition there. That's why UPS and FedEx primarily only deliver packages. Now I say usually because there is an exception that if you have something of vital importance that needs to be like overnighted to somewhere immediately, you are allowed to use FedEx or USPS to ship that if it's of vital importance. And I know what you're thinking. It seems like there's a pretty big gray area there. I mean, who sets the criteria mm. as to whether or not something is important enough to violate the U.S. Postal Service's legal monopoly and be able to use FedEx or UPS to send a letter or an important document. Well, obviously, that would be the U.S. Postal Service's in-house federal law enforcement agency, the Postal Inspectors. By the way, uh, when I was working as a mail carrier, that was an option. Uh, you have to go to college, uh, but I already went to college, but... Um, yeah, you can be a postal inspector, which pays a lot more, and it's a lot less um, dealing with the office drama of a post office. Um, so, yeah, I've got stories. i got stories and stories, stacks on stacks, you know? <laughs> I, I'm not shitting you. The mailmen have their own federal yeah, law do. enforcement agency. I had I had no idea. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, it's not like that. I, I kind of... I mean, not really, but...
Now, typically, the postal inspectors are doing really great things, like making sure that people aren't sending bombs or drugs well, to the mail or investigating mail. people that have had their mail stolen, which, go. if you didn't know, is actually a federal crime. And, and back in the day in 1775, when the post office and the postal inspectors were founded, Congress levied the death penalty for stealing Dude. mail. And while that's all fine and dandy, once in a while, the postal inspectors get a wild hair in their ass, and they decide that they are going to enforce their legalized monopoly. For example, back in 1993, a big company called Equifax was using a private courier to deliver all of their mail really? not just their package equifax the uh credit company is and because of this the u.s postal inspectors Ooh. launched an armed raid of their company headquarters determined that their mail wasn't important enough to be <laughs> overnighted and that they were legally required <laughs> to use the united states postal service wow. and then gave them a thirty thousand dollar fine oh thirty thousand yeah. if you live in america and you run a business and you decide that you don't like using the united states postal service and you're going to exclusively try to use like fedex or ups or something there is a greater than zero percent chance that armed mailmen in boston Body armor will show up to your headquarters and raid your business, tell you that's illegal, and then give you a fine. Okay, do I want to talk shit right now because that seems absolutely insane and ridiculous? Yeah, a little bit. Am I gonna? Absolutely not, because they know where I live, okay? I didn't they know, know they existed until lives. yesterday, and already Special Forces Mailman is on the top of my list of people I'm not gonna fuck with. So everybody kind of already knows that being a mail carrier is a government job, but most people don't understand to the extent that the U.S. Postal Service is its own government entity, so much so that it necessitates its own federal law enforcement agency. So going back to the Grumman mail cat and the actual physical transportation of the mail, it always just kind of went with the times. Back in the 1700s when they were founded, it was delivered on horseback. When cars came out and they became more and more common, the post office began using more and more cars. So the U.S. Postal Service would just acquire whatever cars they needed whenever they needed them, and this yeah. went on for decades. Well, they kind of, um, in small, like, they have rural carriers. If you go to the USS... Uh, uh, or USS. <laughs> if you go to the USS Liberty, uh, if you go to the USS, um, what is it? Uh, USS, uh, US Postal Service, um, you can, uh, uh, the website, uh, they have jobs listed. Not, probably not as much as they used to. Like when I got hired, they were hiring like crazy. Um, I don't know if they have a stop on uh, hiring yet. They should. Uh, it doesn't make sense to hire right now. But, um, I don't even know where I was going with this. Oh, rural carriers. Uh, you use your own vehicle to deliver mail. How would you like to do that? But that's for like small towns and small like areas and stuff. But yeah, that's a thing. But by the 1930s and 1940s, it was becoming a huge issue because the USPS had acquired a ton of different cars. They were all different makes, all different models. They all drove different. They all had different carrying capabilities. They all required different mechanics, different parts. It was a huge logistical. Oh, and that's another thing. Sorry to keep pausing it, but I have a lot of information. Um, the U.S. Postal Service has its own mechanics, too. So if you were a mechanic and you wanted to work on that hunk of junk, uh, which the LLV is, um, because they break down all the time. Um, so, yeah, you can do that. ...nightmare for this enormous fleet of vehicles. As I'm sure you could imagine, it would be like a hundred times easier if all of the vehicles in the U.S. Postal Fleet were the same exact thing Indeed. and all had the same capability requiring the same replacement parts, the same type of mechanics, and you could teach all the postal carriers how to drive one vehicle and one vehicle only. So at the end of World War II, with hundreds of hey, thousands of Americans Thaler. returning home and looking for jobs, Thaler. the United States Postal Service recognized a very unique opportunity with the Willys Motor Company Jeep. Because the Jeep was being used by the U.S military there was already a ton being manufactured and a lot of the people returning home from the military already knew how to drive it there was a ton of people qualified to work on them mechanically and there was a ton yeah. of excess parts around and with the military downsizing there was a huge surplus of them so it Indeed. was a perfect fit in pretty much every way it is a rare case of the government doing something a hundred percent right and the united states postal service adopted the jeep as their primary vehicle and that worked for like 40 years but as the u.s got bigger and bigger with more and more people and people started sending more and more mail and more and more packages the capacity that the jeep could hold simply wasn't enough and the united states postal service wanted something that was capable of carrying more mail but you have to remember this is a government agency and they can't do anything simple when it comes to getting new equipment so not. they can't just go over to like ford or chevy and be like hey build me a new mail Ford. truck. No, they have to figure out the exact specifications that they're looking for, and then they have to send it out to all the government contractors so that they can all put a bid in on it. That way, the government contractors can come in, do the exact bare minimum, and make a ton of money. I Indeed. mean, let's just look at the LLV, for example. They wanted this thing to weigh a maximum of 3,000 pounds. 
sorry, I burped. Um, yeah, I'm trying to like, um, I think I've pretty much gone over like what, what that vehicle has. It's just a regular vehicle, but with no air conditioning. So <laughs> you get a fan, they give you a little fan. It's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Pounds. Guess how much it weighs? Exactly 3,000 really? pounds. They wanted it to be able to carry a minimum of 1,000 pounds. Guess how much it can carry? Exactly 1,000 oh. pounds on the dot. They wanted it to be this tall, this wide, this long, and Grumman came along and said, dope, I'm going to make a metal fucking rectangle exactly that size, throw an engine and some wheels on it, and call it a good day. They literally made a mobile filing cabinet, which to be fair, in hindsight, after serving in the military, I should have been able to recognize that the mail truck that I grew up with was absolutely a military grade piece of equipment built by the cheapest yeah. bidder i mean this is what i drove in the military the humvee ambulance and i mean oh okay um i've drove i drove more jervs and mraps um um than humvees when i was in but i have driven one a few times but yeah. The similarities are there. Yeah, I mean, they both look so. like the blueprints for them were drawn by a third grader that didn't know how to draw yeah, a car no, yet. No, and no. then the 3D renderings were made <laughs> out of fucking Legos. Now, to be fair, though, while I have driven the Humvee ambulance and it's a miserable experience, I've never driven a mail truck. So I don't actually know. Uh, the steering wheel is on the uh, passenger side of the vehicle. I guess it makes it not the passenger side. Um, but there's only one and there's only one seat in there anyway. Um but yeah, the you have to learn to drive um, with the steering wheel on the right side. Just let me know. That's the only difference. What that's like. So I difference. turn to the internet because surely some mailman has written something somewhere on the planet that is going to tell me what that experience is like. And here's what I found. Quote, regular driving around town was pretty bearable, but driving the LLV on the highway Oh, I never even wanted to legal. drive it on I've the highway. I've had to do it a few times, and those times were... Uh, yeah, I've only driven it on the uh, one of those on the highway like a couple of times. Generally, they tell you not to drive on the highway with those. Probably the most terrified I've been while operating any motor vehicle. I wouldn't say Riding terrified. a motorcycle over 100 miles an hour? No problem. Merging onto the highway in a yeah. metal truck? You couldn't pay... I guess, I guess maybe in terms of like the speed, because it does not go very fast. I believe like uh, 55 is probably what I got it up to at one point. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, that thing does feel like it's going to fall apart if you go above 50. But uh, no, nah, it's not like do it again. wasn't the fearing for my life. The sluggish acceleration, deafening noise, and harsh vibration were all bad enough. But knowing the body of the vehicle would crush like a soda can yeah, in an that's accident true. is what made it such a frightening experience. Nope, I was right, because that is to a T what it's like to drive a military ambulance. I got one of those things going 75 one time thanks to an enormous oh, wow. hill, and it felt like I was re-entering the Earth's atmosphere as everything that wasn't strapped down rattled out of place and started falling to the floorboard. Now, I don't know this for certain, but driving a Humvee or an LLV really fast kind of seems like anal beads, you know? The faster you go, the bumpier it gets, and if you go too... Yeah, let's go with that. Too fast, there's going to be shit everywhere. <laughs> what did you say? Brian, this does not seem appropriate to watch in front of the baby. Now, to be fair to the Grumman male cat, is it a turd? Absolutely. But it is really, really tough. Because here's some of the testing criteria the LLV had to be able to meet before it would be adopted as the USPS postal vehicle. Uh, we have drive 5,760 miles at 55 miles an hour with zero malfunctions and All zero broken right. parts. I don't know drive how that 11, happened. 11,520 miles at 45 miles an hour on gravel don't with zero malfunctions that. and zero really? broken parts. Drive 2,800... Dude, those things would break down all the time, though. How does that happen? Eighty <laughs> miles, stopping every 200 50 feet accelerating to at least 15 miles an hour in between stops with zero malfunctions and zero broken parts drive 960 miles on cobblestone zero broken parts drive 960 I don't believe miles it. over potholes and maybe these vehicles were just brand single new wheel hits the pothole at least 35,000 times with zero broken parts to accomplish that they took a chevy s10 chassis shortened the wheelbase so it could have a tighter turn radius and then made the entire body of the vehicle out of aluminum so it couldn't rust so at a minimum at least it's tough despite the fact that it is really tough it is finally time to start replacing the united states postal service yeah well good luck because they've been trying that for years <laughs> they're they're doing it like i said they do it in major cities but to replace the entire fleet like uh, it would cost so much money 
of his carrier vehicle because, well, the engine that they put in these things is an engine from the 1970s known as the there Iron Duke, and this bad boy's getting like nine miles to the gallon. This yeah. is the same engine they were they putting go through in the so Cavalier much gas. in the trailer park for. Dude, sorry to keep pausing. I was just like flashbacks and memories coming back, but like they just give you a card when you leave for your route in the morning, you know, or uh, yeah, and um, it's just like here, put the like. I think I. I'd probably have to fill up um, maybe like three times a week, maybe, I think, something like that. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty nuts how much gas you go through with those things. Ferrari back in the day. I mean, the Pontiac Fiero. Don't laugh. The Pontiac Fiero was high-class white trash, it okay? Was. The only thing cooler than that when I was growing up was the 2002 Dale Earnhardt Edition Monte Carlo. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. The main problem with the LLV is the gas mileage, okay? Because it only gets nine miles to the gallon, you have to realize this is like the biggest fleet of vehicles that the United States has. There's over 140,000 of these things, meaning that for every single penny that gas prices go up, the U.S. Postal Service has to spend an additional eight million dollars on fuel alone and this Indeed. is the part where you're like oh america's capitalist that's fine that's the cost of doing business just raise the prices of your services and it's covered they it's can't. no big deal you would think that but remember the u.s postal service is a government regulated the monopoly Congress meaning that anytime that, they want to change their pricing the government has to sign off on it and the government takes forever to do anything mm -hmm. another example of this would be like the power company right because you can't shop around for different power providers the same way you look for like an try me oh no <laughs> <laughs> internet service provider or a cell phone will. provider you only have one power company available where you live the same way you only have one post office available where you live anytime the power company wants to raise their rates the government has to sign off on it and it's a huge deal same thing applies to the postal service and stamps or anything else because of this they can't effectively adapt and change their prices so it's a humongous issue so how do we solve this well there's two options you could a get rid of the monopoly that's set in place because it's no longer effective for what it was originally supposed to do by helping the u.s USPS, and now it's actually hindering them more than it's helping because they're no longer able to change their prices to actually be competitive or you could be make them get different vehicles and obviously we're absolutely 100 percent of the time going to go with b because the u.s government or any government ever really is never ever going to give up control and they have control over the usps and they're never ever going to let that go yeah, they would rather see that thing yeah. burn to the ground <laughs> than give up control over it so obviously the usps is getting new vehicles but then that bites the u.s postal service in the ass because remember they're a guy I, I he keeps saying that but uh it, it irks me because it's like no they say that they constantly say that. they've been saying that for like de a decade, a solid decade. They've been when I first started working there was um, when was that? 20, I want to say 2012. I started working at the post office, possibly 2013. Um, but yeah, since uh, and I only did I did it for three years. Uh, kudos to whoever's doing that for job for like 20 to 30 years. Um, but um, yeah. They, they've been saying that for a solid decade, as long as I've been there. And people have been saying it even before that, probably. So I, I'll believe it when I see it. Government agency, and they can't just like go to Toyota and be like, hey, Toyota, that new truck that you guys just came out with that's $10,000 and really cool, can we buy a bunch of those for fleet vehicles? No. no, they can't do that. They have to figure out the specs they want, then they have to send that out and let all these defense contractors bid on them. And then after they bid, they have to give the defense contractors millions of dollars so that they can develop the new vehicle. So they're going to pay for all the R&D up front. And then when Oshkosh Defense wins the bid, you know this I fucking would drive. thing that looks like it was animated by Pixar. <laughs> the other company that they... I was going to say Ghibli, but uh, yeah, I, I would... Uh... I would drive it. Beat is going to turn around and file a lawsuit and sue because they're saying that it wasn't a fair enough competition, mm. despite the fact that the U.S. taxpayers literally gave them all the money for R&D in the first place. And then that's going to delay the whole project more. And then bottom line, it's going to take 20 fucking years to fix the issue. The entire time, the U.S. Postal Service is struggling and trying to figure shit out while the government refuses to let them actually do their job and be fucking competitive. And it just sucks because the U.S. Postal Service is sacred. There's nothing more sacred to society than the mailman. All I wanted, all I wanted to do was Indeed. have a happy, lighthearted. You hear that, everybody? I told you I was sacred. 
lighthearted video because I thought it was funny that Northrop <laughs> Grumman was me. making mail trucks. And now, after researching it, I'm going to get upset every time I watch my mail lady deliver the mail because I'm going to recognize that she's wearing a parka and overalls inside of her vehicle because the heater barely works because she's driving a 40-year-old mail truck that's a piece of shit because the government fucks up everything they even get near touching. So Huh, he didn't even touch on the air conditioning. I figured that'd be like number one. That's my number one. Like, especially if you work in the desert. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, yeah, that, I, that would be my number one complaint about the old vehicles is no air conditioning. Heater, eh, depending. It, it's, it, it comes and goes, but air conditioning, please. <laughs> For the love so in of conclusion, God. I guess that's the story <laughs> of why mail trucks are made by defense contractors. And if you're a mail carrier, I've always appreciated you. But I'm going to be honest, oh, I thanks, have another man. level of appreciation for what you do. Because I truly, genuinely had no idea the levels of bureaucratic bullshit oh, yeah, you had to bad. hurdle on your way <clears> to get mail into my crushing. mailbox. So thank you. Seriously, thank you. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com. Word up, doggy. Quack. Quack, bang, out. Learned about the post office. I told you. You some know, the more history oh. I read, the less I trust the government. And maybe, just maybe, that's why in the American education system, <gasps> they emphasize math oh. and science and English way more than they emphasize history. Are you talking about the math? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Learned about the post office. I told you about the air conditioning. That's the worst part about it. I'm telling you, it's pretty bad. Sweating balls, sweating balls, sweating balls. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, he uh, covered some good points. Oh, this uh, lighting is not great. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a bureaucratic nonsense. Um, it, honestly, it's one of the most thankless jobs I've ever had in my life. Um, and the, uh, uh, I got stories that I kind of want to save if I do like a storytelling video, like ASMR type thing. Um, but yeah, that, um, I will say one of the perks though was the, uh, gift cards you'd get on Christmas from your, uh, your regulars, your, uh, regular customers, you know? Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, but, uh. Good, good stuff. Just I wish he would have touched on the air conditioning is my only gripe with that video. Uh, but that's cool, man. Um, there you go. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please like you and subscribe you down below. Makes me feel real good inside and helps out the channel. Um, and if you got any suggestions for any videos that you want to see, uh, put it in the comments and we'll get to those. Um, so uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And bye.